Gaussian application of Gaussian elimination with matrices over GF2. Integer factoring. The prime factorization theorem states that for every integer n greater than or equal to 1, there is a unique bag of prime numbers whose product is n. So for example, the integer 75 is the product of the integers 3, 5, and 5. These are all primes. The integer 126 is the product of 2, 3, 3, and 7. And the integer 23 is the product of 23. All the elements in the bag must be prime. So if the number is itself prime, the bag only has that one number in it. Factoring integers is a famous and long-standing problem. Gauss himself pointed out that the problem of distinguishing prime numbers from composite numbers and of resolving the latter into their prime factors, factoring composite numbers into, prime, into, the, into their prime factors, is one of the most important problems. Here's another authority on the same problem. Uh, Bill Gates points out that the, uh, it would be a breakthrough to develop an easy way to factor large prime numbers. Well, actually, he got that slightly wrong, large composite numbers. What he was speaking of was the role of, pri of factorization in security. When you go to a, a website, say a bank, the browser will show you this lock. And uh, the, the, the URL has the letters HTTPS. The S stands for secure. It's based on something called SSL, which is the Secure Sockets Layer, which in turn is based on RSA, a crypto system named after its inventors, Ravesh Shamir and Edelman. Now, RSA in turn depends on factoring integers being difficult. Testing whether a number is prime turns out to be the easy part. So here's a one-line script. It doesn't get all numbers right, but there are a, a few uh, exceptions. With a few more lines, you can get correct answers, even for these special numbers called Carmichael numbers. So the hard part of factoring is this. Given an integer n, find any non-trivial divisor, other, uh, that is a divisor other than 1 and n itself. If you can do that reliably, then you can factor the integer all the way down to prime numbers. Here's a very simple algorithm for factoring an integer. It tries all the possible div divisors from 2 to n minus 2 and tests whether n is divisible by each one of them. The first divisor it finds, it returns. Well, in fact, if d is the divisor of n, then so is n over d. And the minimum of d and n over d is less than or equal to the square root of n, which shows that uh, the algorithm actually need only search between 2 and the square root of n. So here's the revised version. Uh, I'm using this procedure int squirt, which I'll provide. Unfortunately, or fortunately for RSA, this algorithm is very slow. If you plug in a, an integer n that has uh, 30, 40, 100 digits, it's going to take a long, long time to find a divisor. But here's a tool that's useful in more sophisticated uh, factoring algorithms. Greatest common divisor, GCD, goes l long back and it's very fast. Very easy to write in Python. It finds the greatest common divisor of two integers. That is, uh, the largest of all, of all integers that divide both of the two inputs. So for example, the GCD of 12 and 16 is 4. And the GCD of these two long numbers is this number. You can run this. It'll take very little time to compute this. Here's an approach to trying to factor a large number in. You try to find integers a and b such that a squared minus b squared equals the integer n. And we can factor the left-hand side as a minus b times a plus b equals n. So in this case, a minus b and a plus b are evidently divisors of n. Ideally, they're non-trivial divisors. Well, 
how do we find uh, A and B? Well, we, we, we choose some integer A that's slightly more than square root of n. And we check if the square root of A squared minus n is an integer. And if so, we found B. Now A minus B is the divisor of n. And, and there's at least a good chance that it's a non-trivial divisor. And if not, repeat with another value for A. Here's an example. Start with the integer 77. I know you can uh, factor that, but let's see if this, how this method would factor it. We try a equals 9. Uh, a squared minus n uh, is a perfect square. Its square root is 2. So we let b equal 2. And now a minus b is 7. That is a divisor of n. So we've successfully factored n using this approach. Let's try another example. n equals 23 times 41. We try a equals 31. We look at a squared minus n. That's 18. OK, well, that's not a perfect square. Let's try a equals 32. Well, then a squared minus n is 81. And that is a perfect square. So we've succeeded once again. However, when n is very large, it takes a long time to find an integer a that works in this way. So instead, we'll show how linear algebra can help us synthesize a good a. We're going to change our goal slightly. We're going to try to find integers a and b such that a squared minus b squared is k times n for some integer k. In that case, we factor the left-hand side. a minus b times a plus b is k times n. Now, the prime factors of a minus b together with the prime factors of a plus b equals the set of prime factors of a together with the set of prime factors of n. So let's, let's say that the prime factors of n are p and q. Well, if p and q are both, fac are both factors of a minus b, or, or both factors of a plus b, then computing the GCD of a minus b with n won't find a, a non-trivial divisor of n. However, here's an example. Let's say n is 7 times 11. And k is 2 times 3 times 5 times 13. Well, if a minus b is 2 times 7 times 11, and a plus b is 3 times 5 times 13, uh, that, that'll work out. Then when you take the GCD of a minus b with n, uh, it's not going to find uh, a, a, a non-trivial divisor. It's just going to uh, give you n. So that didn't quite work. But if, 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 if p, say, is a divisor of a minus b, and q is a divisor of a plus b, or vice versa, then, in fact, the GCD of a minus b with n will find a non-trivial divisor. For example, let's say a minus b is 2 times 5 times 11. a plus b is 3 times 7 times 13. Well, one of the factors, one of the uh, prime factors of n is in the factorization of a minus b, and one of them is in the factori factorization of a plus b. So GCD of a minus b with n will find you the factor 11. Well, how can we find integers a and b such that a squared minus b squared is even an integer multiple of n? Well, here's, how, here's the strategy. Start by finding, say, the first 1,000 prime numbers. Now, choose a and compute a squared minus n. And we see if a squared minus n can be factored using only these prime numbers. And if not, we throw it away and we choose another a. If it can be, we record a and the factorization of a squared minus n. Remember, the factorization of a squared minus n in this case consists just of these first just of a subset of these first 1,000 primes. We repeat this process about 1,000 times. We get a table like this. These are the integers a where we succeeded. We took a squared minus n and found that it could be factored using these first few primes. We tried 52, 50, 
53. We tried 54, but that didn't work, so we went to 58, and so on. So for, for each of these values of a, we have the factorization of a squared minus n. How do we find the integer b? We want to find a subset, say a1 through ak, of those values of a, such that a1 squared minus n times a2 squared minus n, and so on, is itself a perfect square. So in this case, we can combine the numbers a1 equals 51, a2 equals 67, and a3 equals 71. So a1 squared minus n times a2 squared minus n times a3 squared minus n is, well, we know the factorization of a1 squared minus n. It's 3 times 5 times 19. We know the factorization of a2 squared minus n. That's 2 times 3 squared times 5 times 23. And we know the factorization of a3 squared minus n. That's uh, 2 times 3 times 19 times 23. So we, we multiply all these primes together. And this is the number we get. You notice anything interesting here? All the exponents are even. What that means is that this number is a perfect square. Here's the square root. All right. Well, how do we find a subset of those a's that will work in this way? A subset of a's such that the corresponding product of a squared minus n is a perfect square. We're going to use linear algebra. We represent each factorization as a vector over gf2. So an, a factorization that looks like this, p1 to the a1, p2 to the a2, up to pk to the ak, is represented by a vector in which p1 maps to either 0 or 1, depending on whether a1 is even or odd. p2 maps to either 0 or 1, depending on whether the exponent a2 is even or odd, and so on. Now, let a be the matrix whose rows are these vectors over gf2. What we want to do is find a subset of those factorizations whose product is a perfect square. And that corresponds to a subset of the rows of A whose sum is the 0 vector. We need to find a non-zero vector uh, in the set of vectors u such that u times A equals the 0 vector. This is basically the, this is the null space of A transpose. Now, how can we guarantee that, uh, that there is a non-trivial vector in, uh, in this space. We just make sure that the number of rows is greater than the rank of the matrix. Since the number of columns is the number of primes that we started with, say 1,000, all we have to do is get 1,001, and we're guaranteed that there'll be some non-trivial vector in this set. So we represent each factorization by, the GF2, by a GF2 vector where the values depend on whether the exponents in the factorization are even or odd. So the factorization 2, 7, 13, all the exponents are 1, therefore odd. So we represent it by the, the vector where 2 maps to 1, 13 maps to 1, 7 maps to 1, and all the other primes map to 0. Similarly, this factorization 3 to 3 times 5 times 7 is represented by the vector where 3 maps to 1 because the, the exponent 3 is odd, 5 maps to 1 because the exponent, in this case 1, is odd, and 7 maps to 1 because the exponent of 7 is 1, which is odd. So now we have a bunch of GF2 vectors. We build a matrix A whose rows are these GF2 vectors. Here are some other fun things to do with Gaussian elimination over GF2. We can solve lights out puzzles. We can attack Python's pseudo random number generator. So if you import the module random, you can use it to generate random bits. But 
what's the next 32 bits to be generated, you can actually use Gaussian elimination to predict those bits accurately. And here's another application, breaking the simple authentication scheme. You'll recall that the simple authentication scheme works like this. The password is an n vector, x hat, over gf2, known only to the computer and the human. The computer authenticates the human by sending challenges that the human has to reply to. So the computer sends a random n vector, a, and the human sends back the dot product of a with the password, x hat. And this is repeated until the computer is convinced that the human knows the password. This scheme isn't so secure. If our eavesdropper, Eve, listens in on the communication, she'll learn a bunch of challenges and the right responses to those challenges. The password is a solution to a matrix vector equation consisting of the challenges and the responses. And once the rank of the matrix reaches n, the number of bits in the password, the solution is unique. So Eve can use Gaussian elimination to find the password. How can we make this very simple authentication scheme more secure? We introduce mistakes. In each round, the human, after receiving the challenge and computing the dot product with the password, rolls a die. If the die comes up 6, the human intentionally flips the bit before sending it back to the computer. Now the computer knows to expect some of the bits to be wrong. So the computer authenticates the human if the human gets the right answer, say, 75% of the time. Now let's look at it from the perspective of Eve. Even if she knows that the human is introducing intentional errors, she doesn't know in which rounds the errors are being introduced. So Eve can't just take the challenges and responses that she observes and plug them into Gaussian elimination because it'll get the wrong answer. In fact, we don't know of any efficient algorithm that will find the password when the right-hand sides are wrong. So this scheme in which mistakes are intentionally introduced could actually be a secure authentication scheme.